Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and we are going on an exciting adventure this evening in the Word of God. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm going to start off here with Hebrews 11. I went into this with you guys a little while back, but as you can see, we've got, what, 15 scriptures probably sitting up here on the screen that we're going to be going through. Very exciting. I'm expecting your faith to be up and ready to roll after you hear this message. If it's not beforehand, I expect it's going to be that way uh, just after we're done here. So let's start right off. Now, faith is the substance of things not hoped for. Hope, hope never delivers. That word in the Greek language is expected. Remember that? I taught you that a little while back. Now, faith is a substance. It's something you can get a hold of, something tangible of things expected for the evidence of things not seen. So even though you can't see it, you can't see it coming. Maybe you're looking for divine healing. Maybe you have uh, need of a financial deliverance. You're going through a very difficult time. Maybe you have a need of a better job. Uh, something of that order there. Uh, the home you live in, maybe the plumbing is broken, everything else. You know, it's not that you need a new home. You just need an answer to fix the problems there. I don't know what the answer is there, but I'm excited today, mainly because I woke up this morning and I felt absolutely marvelous. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. That was a major step for me because... I uh, want to add my wife believing for me as well, and I thank God for that because she's really on this faith movement uh, going on it right now, and she always tells me, she says, Steve, I've heard you preach this all these years that we've been married, you know, and she said, you need to start applying it for yourself. You know, I stopped taking prednisone, right? And I actually showed you guys a picture of my arm. I don't know how well you can see it with the camera here, but it was only about that much there had already healed. Now it's dropped down to about that much there. The skin just replacing itself there. And I'll talk to you a little bit later about what I did on that. But that even that takes faith as well. We're going to talk about that at the end of the broadcast. I don't want to talk about it right now. But what I want to talk, I want to work with you guys on your faith. There's Maybe there's many of you out there that are sick. You know, I don't know what, like I said, I don't know what it is, but I want you to start expecting. I want your faith to be a genuine substance that you are expecting that to be delivered. All right. For for let's let's take take a serious look at this in Hebrews because I'm gonna quote. I want to take some of the things that Jesus said, and I really want this to sink in. I don't want this just to be uh, a message of you know. Oh, yeah, you know, kind of half-hearted. No, I'm really wanting you guys to grab a hold of this. We're Because we're living in such an hour of chaos all around us. But we, you know, the thing is, is we create our own atmosphere. We create the very world that is around us. And by that, how do we do it? We do it with our own mouth, our own words, our own thinking creates that world around us. And I want you to begin to start creating a world and an atmosphere around you to where when other people come in your presence, they're like, wow, I feel so much better just talking with you today. You know, you really encouraged me. You know, that's the way we should be, right? Absolutely. So let's look at it. For by, for by it, elders obtained a good report. The elders. So in other words, the elders had faith. And they had the substance of faith. In other words, they had something they were holding on to of things that they expected and the evidence of things that were not even seen, right? Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made, were, excuse me, were not made of things which do appear. Can you imagine that? I mean, you're looking at the world that we're on right now, right? Mountains, trees, lakes, rivers, oceans, mountains, volcanoes, everything, fish, birds, everything that we see here on this earth. At one time, it literally, there was no existence of it at all. And through faith, 
God believed his own word. He, 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 do you realize that every single thing on this earth, he had to think about it in his own mind. And as God began to think on it, he meditated upon it. And then by his own faith, that became a genuine substance, God then began to speak those things into existence. It went from, it went from in his heart to the thoughts of his mind as he worked it out. Listen, if you've ever been an inventor, you've ever invented things, I have done that. I've invented some pretty incredible things in life. Uh, you know, it really takes a tremendous amount of thought. I mean, think about a car engine, for example. Right? Every aspect of that engine, the pistons, the cam, uh, and how it's going to be inside this block, and how that the the fuel that's going to come there, the that's going to be, I'm going to use an old engine for an example, just because I don't understand the modern technology side of things, you know, but in the old carburetors, right, you know, the, the guy that invented this, he had to come up with the idea that the fuel is going to go inside this carburetor, there's going to be like a little bowl, with a little float, that float stops the fuel at a certain level, then it goes into the next part of the carburetor, you know, and then the fumes go down inside into what they call the intake, and then he had to have the valves inside the engine and stuff, and, and as that cam rolls around, Around. there's a cam in there with different little lumps on it there so that it raises the valves up and down allows the gas to go in and when the gas fumes go down in there there's an explosion there's a spark there's a wire there I mean all these different moving actions and what's he doing for one reason this guy that invented all this had to come up with all that in his head so he could make an axle spin on the other end then he had to come up with, because it only spun at one particular speed, so then he had to create a transmission idea in his head as well, which originally was standard transmission, so that the ratio of the gears could change. Then it had to get back to the rear end to an axle that split it to two different wheels. Then he had to think of every motion, the body of the car that's going to sit on top of it, the doors, the hinges, oh my gosh. Oh, you're gonna have a window on there, okay? So we're gonna, how we're we gonna make a glass roll up in that window there, the frame of the door. Every last little piece of an automobile, look it up how many parts there are. The number of parts is amazing in itself, right? I think a gas engine is like 800 and something parts and there's something in there, that rough idea. Diesel is much less, about 300 parts less than a gas is. But all these thoughts have to come into your mind to create that one engine. Now just think about the human body, how the human body is made. And the heart, the lungs, the liver, the organs, the blood vessels, the nervous system, the brain, and all the complexity of the brain, which is basically the computer. And I always think, too, about the guy that invented the computer, you know. My gosh, what did he have to think about, right? And I don't know, maybe somewhere, I don't see it handy. I ran across a brochure the other day of a device that I invented years ago. And it was fairly complex itself. And all the, you know, the months that I thought about this device to develop it, it was a dolly that could lift like an MRI machine without touching the MRI machine, but could lift from the base only, could also go and level that machine on any kind of incline. We could, we could level. Man would not have to pick it up. It would be, you could disassemble it, assemble it around the machine, pick it up, move it, and go to any place you have to go with it. Even the military got very interested in this contraption that I made. It was called the cradle dolly. Now, I'm not going to get into that because I want to stay focused on faith, right? But the whole point is, is think how great God is because the trees, the humans, the birds, you know, everything that he designed and made is just unbelievable. You know, how the life can live in a blade of grass. How, how that, and think about it, right? Even like, for example, you put a seed in the ground and everything is in that seed that when it goes in the ground and the sun hits the ground and the water, you know, it's funny. It's got it's like a death, burial and resurrection, so to speak. Right. The seed goes in the ground. It kind of somewhat semi rots in order for it to crack open. The sun heats the ground. The water that comes on the ground. 
and then boom, out pops this little tiny little shoot coming up out of the ground. Now, interestingly enough, most almost there's so many plants that their shoot when it first pops up, they look almost alike on everything. Not exactly, but a lot of times very similar in the beginning. But now what is it? The roots on that little rascal, they're down there, they're digging in the dirt, digging deeper and deeper, sucking up little nutrients and things and minerals from the ground. I don't know how they're doing it, but they're doing it somehow. But every one of those plants will take a different shape and a different form, all based on whatever genetic code is in that seed. And then they'll end up producing a fruit. Might be a tomato, might be a watermelon, might be potatoes down in the ground while the plant grows on top. And down in the ground, the potato is forming that you'll be able to consume. The birds of the air, the fish, uh, whatever it might be, the acorns that fall to the earth that the deer might be able to eat, or the squirrels, etc. And even, even we ourselves, we consume things that come from the earth and then our bodies form. It's just absolutely amazing to me, right? So let's look at this. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And not just one world, but worlds, plural, not just our earth. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. By it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's important. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That is very important right there. He will reward your diligence in seeking him. Think about it. So whatsoever you have need of, when you believe God and you have that expectation of God, as we read right there in the very first sentence there, now faith is a substance. When you have that faith, that substance of faith and of things that you are expecting, take out the word hope, that's not correct, expecting for the evidence of things that are not seen. So you don't have to see it. All you got to do is have faith in your heart, expect that you're going to receive it, and be diligent with God in seeking him, and he will be the rewarder. You know, the scripture talks about those things that were on your heart. Oh, gosh, I, forget. I taught a message on that a little while back. I forget exactly how it goes now. But I, I remember I shared with you the thing, in other words, the things that are in your mind, God brings near to you. Where your, That's it. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. In other words, what does that mean? Reverse it around. Flip-flop the way it's written so it makes more sense. See, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In other words, wherever your heart is, it will manifest as a treasure to you. So if your heart is truly on God and you're seeking God, then it will manifest as a reality to you because whatever he is, he will manifest that in your life. You want more faith? He'll give it to you. You want, you want to see more of him? You want to be in his presence? You want to feel him? You want revelation? You, you know what I mean? I like to think about what Solomon sought for those things. He said, God, I want wisdom that I might be able to do what? Help his people. Now Solomon ended up getting in a bunch of soothsayers and stuff like that, but he started off on the right path. He had the right idea. Satan's always there, though, to try to dis disrupt things. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen, as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. 
Now, this is one we're going to really go look at in a little bit, too. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went or where he was going in layman's terms. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Everybody thinks that was Israel or Jerusalem. You see, the reason why he was looking for a city was because he met the king, Melchizedek. Think about that. He met the king Melchizedek. He knew he was the king of righteousness. And if he's a king, he must have a city somewhere that he's over. So he was looking for a city that had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That lets you know that he knew that Melchizedek was God manifested in flesh. Hmm. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. By the way, you know, when they came out uh, of the land that they were living in, which was in modern day Jordan, uh, if you look at the map, depending on there's debates, it could have been Iran, uh, there's some... That, uh, Syria, that could have been part of Syria at the time and the part that is called the modern day Turkey. Uh, but nonetheless, he comes and he's headed down towards Israel. Sarah, though, at the time when they left, I believe Abraham was 75, Sarah was 65. Now, she must have had a very youthful look because at the age 65, she was still fair to look upon according to what Abraham said. But by the time that the promise was to draw nigh and she was 90 years old, the scripture says she was far past the age of bearing children. So I would imagine finally, like it does with so many of us, as we talk about when I talk about X39, at the age of 60, your stem cells stop producing in your body and age sets in. The corruption of the body sets in as well. So at 65, her stem cells had just stopped functioning. But she undoubtedly had not lost that beauty as of yet. I've actually met women like that in real life. Bonnie Harvey with uh, Hebrew Nation Radio, when I do that broadcast with her, when me and my wife first met her, I think Bonnie was around 68 or so, something like that. And she was still very youthful looking. And she shared with us, even to this day, Bonnie's in her 70s now, but her mother in her 90s still living. And she said to me, even her mother still looks like a young, somewhat of a young woman. She said roughly like she'd be a 70-year-old woman now, which means she's aging, but not as rapidly as some women do. We're going to go into that in a little bit. You're going to get excited about this. Uh, anyway, so... Without further ado, let's start looking at some of the wonderful things that Jesus said. Remember, faith is a substance, and it's a, it's a substance of things expected. Keep that in mind, things expected. Now, we're over here in the book of Matthew chapter 9, and I want to back up just for a moment. And let's start, let's see. Jesus talks about, Neither do men put new wine in old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runs out and the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay your hand upon her, and she shall live. Wow. He, not only did he have faith, which was his substance, 
but he had expectation that if Jesus would come and lay his hand upon his daughter, she will live. He spoke what he believed. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Why do you think Jesus followed him? Because Jesus already saw that man had faith. Remember what it says? He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. He's on the way to go help this guy's daughter, but this other woman, she's got a blood issue. And she touched the hem of his garments. For she said within herself, this is what's beautiful. You get to see the faith and how it operated in the person. If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Her faith was the substance, but it was an expectation. If all I do is touch that hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. But Jesus turned about him, and when he saw her, said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole, and the woman was made whole from that hour. Now, I want you to notice something here. The touching him is not what healed her. Jesus said it was her faith that made her whole. But her faith, the expectation was if she touched him, it would happen. So God honored the way her faith operated because she knew she had the substance of faith and her expectation was if I touched the hem of his garment, I'd be made well, right? All right, let's continue down further then. He said unto them, Give place for the maid. Okay, here we go. Now he comes to that guy's house. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place. For the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. You know, the ones that had faith was her father. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand. And the maid arose, and the fame hereof went abroad into all that land. And when Jesus departed thence, tents, two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying that they say they that see that no man knoweth it or knoweth. Isn't it amazing? Again, notice what he said. According to your faith, be it unto you. You see, if you'll notice, everything comes right back to faith, just like it's written by Paul in Hebrews there. When we read at that very beginning there, faith is the substance of things expected, expected for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I want to read to you this in Hebrew too. The very let's see, I think it's the one about the yeah, the one about the blinded eyes here. Because in the Hebrew language, Matthew's Hebrew gospel, it's got a little bit different type of wording, and I thought it was interesting, so I just figured I'd share it to you, with you. When he had put them outside, this is where the, the, the little maid was rose up, and Jesus went to her, touched her, and the girl arose. This report went out into all that land. Jesus passed on from there, and behold, two blind men were running after him and crying out to him, Have mercy on us, son of David. He came to the house, and the blind men drew near to him. He said, Your faith will heal you. 
The eyes of the two men were immediately opened, and they saw, and he commanded them, saying, Be careful, lest the matter be made known. Isn't that beautiful? Your faith will heal you. All right, let's continue on. Another one in the book of Mark, we read, chapter 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever, sh uh, whatsoever shall say, excuse me, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Wow. Again, this case, the word belief is used. which is still the same thing as faith. And then if you speak it, you shall have what you say. And some of the old Baptist ministers used to say, oh, it's a mountain of sin. That, what an unbelief. Don't even listen to unbelief like that. If he said a mountain, bless God, he meant a mountain, and I don't care what anybody else got to say about it. That's just what he said. When Jesus walked on water, he didn't walk on, oh, you know, he, he intended to walk on water. No, he walked on water. And if you have a need to walk on water, bless God, you can walk on water. And I do believe that. If you have a need to walk through a wall, Jesus said that the things that, I, that, that he did, he said, you will do also. But greater than this, he said, because why? He said, I go unto the Father. Why would that make it greater? You want to know why? Because Jesus said, in that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. Well, you just ended up, not only everything that Jesus did, not only everything that God himself, the Father, can do, but now Jesus made you the promise that he was going to the Father and he's going to come back and not leave you comfortless, but he would send the Holy Spirit. And what did he say? He said, you would know in that day that I'm in the Father, the Father's in me, and then basically we both are inside of you. So anything that he did, you can do. I mean, I feel so excited. I'm sorry, I'm probably being a little bit loud, but bless God, I don't care. So I'm just excited. I woke up excited this morning. I felt great, you know. They say when you come off prednisone, it takes months to go through the withdrawals of it. And it's not like withdrawals like drugs where I guess with people that come off of narcotics, it's different. Your joints hurt. You're nauseated all the time. You're, uh, there's a lot of different side effects from that, right? And I've been hearing, all I hear is that you're going to be two to three months of this types of problems. Well, two weeks later, I woke up this morning and I felt great for the first time. I felt great and I just started praising God. By the way, what I was going to get to a moment ago, Jesus walked through a wall. If you got to walk through a wall, I believe what happens is suddenly it'll look as if that wall is not even there and you step right through it. If there is a need, God will provide. I know of a girl one time, uh, she was uh, had somebody following after. She could hear the man, uh, she looked back and she's seen him and she's very concerned that he had very ill intent. And she took one day, and as this was happening, she's got I think she got off the bus from school, and this man was trying to follow her. She got afraid. She looked over at this house. She went inside the house, didn't even know whose house it was, closes the door, goes and hides in a closet. All of a sudden, she heard the door open of the house, and she could hear the man walking back and forth in the hallway. Finally, she heard the man leave. He didn't find her. She goes home, she tells her mother about the event and everything, of everything that took place and what had happened and how she was afraid and stuff. And all of a sudden, her mother, after listening to the story for about 20 minutes here, she tells her daughter, she said, honey, she said, there is no house on that side of the street. And the little girl stopped as she began to cry and weep. She realized God put a house there for her to hide in.
Isn't that amazing? Whatsoever things you have need of, believe and God will provide for you. You expect it, God will provide it. All right, let's continue on. Uh, let me drink a little bit of tea here. That's another thing too, by the way, I stopped, I cut way back on. I only drink about a third of tea, mostly now I drink water. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this, we just read that, right? Okay. Therefore I say unto you, what's, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Did you just hear that? That's what I got highlighted in black. Therefore I say unto you, that's Jesus talking, okay? What things soever you desire, when you pray, now it's not just desire, he's going to tell you what you got to do, believe that you receive them, and the word them is not even there, just believe you receive, and you shall have, so when you have a desire, you pray, but when you pray, you need to believe that you have received, there it is again, Oh my goodness, go back over there to Hebrews, right? Faith is that substance of things expected, the evidence of things not seen. And what did he say there? When you pray and you have that desire of something, when you pray, believe that you've received it. Believe you've received something that you cannot see. And you shall have. Not even the word them. The them's italicized. Believe that you receive and you shall have. Expecting that unseen thing. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespass. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, Forgive your trespass. So it's contingent too on not holding things against people. If you've sinned and, and hurt your brother, sister, go make that right first. Because when you pray, that stands right in the way of your faith. And you know why it stands in the way of your faith? Because you know in your heart, you know you got something left there undone. Never leave anything undone. Always do your best to make all those things right. All right, let's continue on now. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. Remember that? Let me, let's back up and what, see what this was. I forgot about this. Uh, he answered and said unto this, answereth him and saith, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came on him? And he said, Of a child. And oftentimes it cast him into the fire and the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. By the way, if you remember, that was the deaf and dumb and blind. I think it was a deaf mute. And let me just back up and see. Um, uh, yeah, which had, he had a dumb spirit on him. That's what it was. Had a dumb spirit on him. And he asked his father, okay, we got that. Verse 22, and oftentimes it cast him in the fire. We read that too, and then and into the waters to destroy him. But you can do, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now see, that's that was the the notice his wording there, right? Mm. Give me one second here. I don't want I don't want to miss this with you guys. But, again, watch very carefully. But if you, and I'm using modern English so you don't, we don't miss it, but if you can do anything, 
have compassion on us and help us. You notice that one word, though, that he used right there? Oh, I can't highlight it. Won't let me do it because it's already high. If. But if. That's unbelief. Jesus said unto him, if you can believe. So Jesus puts the if back on him now. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. What, what's possible? All things. All things. Do you know that Jesus said, or I believe this, I just know it's scriptural. Let me just pull it up just so we don't make a mistake on this. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yep, here we go. It's in John, third John, chapter one, verse two. I'm going to blow it up so you can see this here. Let's read verse 1 and verse 2. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Now, I you can't take or add to from God's word, all right? But he said, I would above all that you prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So the soul prospering involves both the prosperity and the health of the, of the, of the brother or the people that he was talking about there. Your soul prospers. So God wants you to prosper and to be in good health. So now, as we look at that, and then we go back to the scripture here, Jesus said unto him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help Thou mine unbelief. So what did he do? He took the little bit of faith that he did have. He might have only had the faith of a mustard seed, but he applied that faith and asking Jesus to help him with his unbelief. Boy, what can you imagine? I mean, does anybody really think of the depth of what he did? He had a little tiny bit of faith and he took that little bitty tiny faith and he said, Lord, help my unbelief. What, what did that do? That gave him that dynamo of faith because he took the little bit of faith and asked for that great big faith and then he got what he asked for. Because, and, and you know how I know he got a great big giant faith at that point? Because even the apostles, remember he brought him, he brought it to his apostles and they couldn't cast out that dumb spirit. And Jesus let him know if you would believe. Because see, Jesus can't do it. Jesus can't do anything for him. He can't do anything for you unless you believe it. And you got to confess it. You got to think it. Believe it, and then speak it. Mm. And straightway the father of the child, because he cried out. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. There you go. There you go. Right? Let's look at another one here in the book of Mark, chapter 7. 
Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast you your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now, do you know what he's talking about there? You remember Jesus spoke to the people in parables, all right? And without a parable, he did not speak. He said, why? Because he told his apostles, it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest I speak in parables because it's not given to them to know. Notice what he says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs and neither cast you your pearls before the swine. You remember when I read to you from one of the ancient Egyptian writings there uh, that the Christians had stored there in their libraries there and Jesus actually stated in that document there. I don't call it a biblical document, but just think of what he says here and then remember what he said over there. He said, there are many in many animals that are in human form. There you go. You just never know. And we know he's, we know that we can back that up too because Jesus said about the Pharisees, he said, you serpents, you vipers. They were snakes in human form. You know, what's fascinating, right? They had that series long year. well, I said, well, I shouldn't say long years ago. I seen it. They called it grim. And, uh, you know, if you ever watch it from a spiritual perspective, it'll make more sense to you. Now, they kind of glorify the animal that's in human form. But think along the line of the Merovindian dynasty, the serpent race dynasty that claims to be lineage of Jesus or Jesus and Mary Magdalene allegedly getting married. How preposterous is that? Jesus rose again and ascended up into heaven. He didn't go up into England and get married to Mary Magdalene and have a race that they later called the Merovindian bloodline that they claim as a serpent race bloodline. How demonic is that? No wonder what. Well, there was a serpent bloodline and no doubt what it was was the Pharisees continued on, but undoubtedly they adopted the name of Christianity. Hmm. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. All you got to do is ask, and all you got to do is seek. Knock. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, finding it to him, that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom his son asked bread? Will you give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? That's why I told you a little while back, do a little deep thinking on that one right there. Remember in the book of Numbers, the children of Israel were complaining, remembering the fish that they had. A few chapters later, a whole bunch of serpents come in and killed them. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? You know, Jesus, think about it. This is why when they were hungry, he gave them fish to eat and bread to eat when he fed the multitude. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter you in the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way which leadeth to destruction. And many be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. I'll pause on that one. I forgot exactly why I put that one in there, but anyway. I want to stay on the faith here. Wherefore I say to you, her sins, though there be many, are forgiven. She, she, okay, we already know that one there. Um, 
Well, the, yes, yeah, so about the woman that had committed, she lived in harlotry or something like that. She's in the house of Simon, uh, the, the Pharisee uh, that invited Jesus, but Jesus was not welcomed. And at the end, though, Jesus says to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. Again, it's faith is what I wanted to bring your attention to, right? Over in the book of Mark, chapter 10, Jesus answered and said unto to him, what will that I should do unto you? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy faith made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. This one here is in uh, Matthew chapter 8. Um... When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto you. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid sick of a fever. And he touched her, and the fever left her. By the way, that was, a, if I'm not mistaken, that was the Roman soldier that, um, uh, yeah, he was a centurion. And he, and he asked Jesus, uh, uh, if he would just, well, let's just read it, because I find this fascinating in the way this happens. Um, okay, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be the, uh, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. That was a man that wanted to be healed of leprosy. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go uh, thy way and show yourself to the priests and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy and grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servants shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, and having soldiers under me, I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he comes, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. You know, what, what impressed Jesus with this man is that he, from his own lively, daily uh, position, a centurion means that he's a commander over a hundred soldiers, but he knew from the way that he dealt with his soldiers, you know, he gives a command, that soldier obeys, so therefore he knew that Jesus could command the evil spirit that causes the sickness, and that spirit is going to obey him. That's where his faith lied at. His faith, he could see that Jesus commanded the spirit world, just like he was dealing in the natural realm, and if Jesus could do that, like he does it, he knew that Jesus' word would take effect. What an amazing faith that is. I mean, absolutely amazing. All right. Now, I mentioned to you I wanted to talk a little bit about, I was going to bring you back to um, uh, Genesis. Not, yeah, in the book of Genesis, the story of Abraham and Sarah, right? This is where the Lord said unto Abram, he's not, he's not had a name change yet, get thee out of thy country and from your kindred and from thy father's house. And into the land that I will show you and I will make thee a great nation and will bless thee and make thy name great and be thou a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you and him that curses you will I curse. And in, and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham went out as the Lord spoke unto him. Lot went with him, and Abram was 70, 
and five years old when he departed out of Haran. All right, and he takes his wife. Now we know that he's 10 years older than her. That's why I said 75 and 65, right? Now, interestingly though, this is also where people get the idea that if you know if you if you don't bless Israel, God's going to curse you. No, God said that to Abraham. Now, and we see that manifest in the coming chapters, right? Here's what happens a little later down the road. Now we get over, now that was in, uh, hang on, let me go back. That was up in chapter 12. And by the time we get over here to chapter 17, Abram, Abram was 90 years old and nine, 99 now. He left at 75, was in still pretty good shape. Now he's 99 years old. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be thou wholehearted. And I will make my covenant between me and you and multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For the father of multitude of nations have I made thee. Remember what uh, Paul wrote in Hebrews, right? Faith is a substance of those things expected, but it was also of the unseen. Now, Abraham wasn't believing very well at that time, by the way. But God changes his name. I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and thy seed after you. Throughout their generations for everlasting covenant to be a God unto you and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto you and to, to thy seed after you the land thy, uh, of thy sojourning, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, and as for thee, thou shalt keep my covenant, and thou and thy seed after thee throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every male throughout your generations, he that is born in the house, or brought, bought with money, or any foreigner that is not of not thy seed. And he that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of foreskin, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Now I'm going to jump on down. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? Or shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Because Ishmael was his son. It was his seed through Hagar. Remember, he got her as a servant, a gift to his wife when she was taken by the Pharaoh of Egypt back when she was 65. When he said to her, he asked his wife to lie, you know, tell him, you're, well, in a way, it was not a complete lie because after all, they were brother and sister, but just had different mothers. Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Not nay, but Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his seed after him. Now, by the way, even though Sarah laughed too, and God got upset with her for laughing, God held Abraham responsible for the laughter. That's why Isaac's name was thus named Yitzhak. Yitzhak means he laughed, not she laughed. Tisak would have been she laughed. 
But God didn't say that. Even though she did, she laughed to him and said, well, I have pleasure with my Lord seeing that I'm old and he's old too. You know, how, how are we going to do? In other words, their bodies had given out. The stem cells had ceased. Even back when they left the land, they had already ceased. But, you know, even my father-in-law, when he was 75, he was still looking fairly handsome. But you could tell he was older. But once you get around 80 years old, that age really begins to catch up with you very rapidly. You could still be in great shape, live to your 90s. But you can definitely see the aging as that time of 80 comes around. And even biblically, we hear of those things, right? So anyway, he holds on and he, he, you know, he, you know, he's still waiting. God says to him that he's going to visit him according to the time of life. And about this time next year, you're going to have a son, right? Now, let me see if I can find that one place where he says that. Um, maybe it's the next one here. Yeah, here we go. It's going to be in this chapter here. And Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. So now she's admitting that she's gotten old. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child who am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord at the set time? I Notice that at the set time, I will return unto thee. When the season cometh round, and Sarah shall have a son. And by the way, the word shuv right there, there it is. Ashuv elecha. All right. Ashuv elecha. I will return unto you. Literally, le me, uh, me oved. Hmm. I'm looking at something here that I've not thought about before. Lemo Oved, for from the works I will turn to you. Kaet Haya Ulasara Bain. And Sarah shall have a son. Wow. He basically, in a year's time or less, maybe immediately, I don't know exactly how this worked out, but he caused them to return back to a youthful state. And you might think, that's crazy, Brother Steve. Well, that's what it says in the Hebrew language. That's the way I see it written on there. Le me'oved. Ashuv Elecha. Now, and I believe I can, not only do I see it written like that, but I can support it. All right, let me just highlight that there with a scriptural proof here. In Genesis chapter 20, remember now, this is over in chapter what, 17, I believe, in chapter 18. He's telling them that they're going to return. Now, Sarah's going to be 91 years old. Abraham will be 100 years old, or 101, whatever the case is. But he says he's going to return them back. And it no doubt is to a useful state. I'll prove it to you. Now we jump all the way over to chapter 20. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the land of the south, and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur, and he sojourned in Gerir. And Abraham said to Sarah, said of Sarah his wife, 
She is my sister, and Amalek, king of Greer, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Amalek in a dream at night and said to him, Behold, thou shalt die because of the woman whom thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Do you think Amalek, being a young king, would be interested in taking Sarah, grandma, with a cane for a wife? I don't think so. I don't believe that for a single moment. Something had to have happened because over here in chapter 18, God clearly says he's going to turn them back. La Oved. Ashuv. Wow. I mean, I know how I would translate it. It's the works. Returning is he's doing a work to return them back to him. And then by the time you get over here to chapter 20, she must be looking pretty nice again. Because Abraham's back to the same old thing he did back when they were younger. Uh, she's my sister. He only said that when she was fair to look upon. Now they just confessed that they were old and well stricken in years and past the age of those things of being able to bear. And now Amalek sees her and falls in love with her. But God came to Amalek in a dream the night and said to him, Behold, thou shalt die because of the woman whom thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Could it be possible that in a year's time, a woman that was 90 years old could suddenly begin to look young again? You think about it. We've been talking about faith. And I'm going to end now. i tell you what I do want to do, though, before I get into this next part here. I want to pray with those of you that, you, you, regardless of what you're going through in life, I want to pray with you right now that God will answer the need that you might have. Because I know He's a God that hears. And I know He's a God that, you know, and, and that might be your, your, you might have been saying while I've been doing this video, if Brother Steve would just pray for me, I know that God will make me well. That's not because Brother Steve's praying for you. That's because maybe your faith was lying in that, that if I prayed for you, that God would make you well. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you have a need of something else. It could be anything that you have need of. And you might have just been thinking that. Maybe not, but I'm just saying. That might be somebody that's listening. But it's actually not me. It's your faith. But I, I do want to pray for you right now. That God will grant you the desire of your heart. And I guarantee you, if you're lacking in faith, just do like that one man did there. He said, Lord, he said, Lord, I believe. Help mine unbelief. He took that little bitty mustard seed that he did have and he asked for that. And boy, did he not get a powerful faith in. So you believe and expect. You take your faith, that substance of your faith, and you expect the unseen thing for God to manifest that in your life right now as I pray for you. Heavenly Father, I don't know who's out there or what a person might need, Father, but I do realize, Lord, there may be those that are listening that are sick. Maybe there's cancer 
or or there's some other kind of problem, diabetes, or Father, I've known even from just doing when we did Lifeway, Father God, I, I, I could not believe the number of sicknesses and the troubles that people are suffering with like never before. I heard all kinds of things that people are going through. Father God, I realize that if people that came for that purpose are suffering, how many more right now? And the sound of my voice are suffering like never before. Dear God, it might be their loved ones that are away from you, that they want to see them come to Christ. Maybe someone backslidden, Lord. And like I said, maybe it's just sickness of different kinds, skin trouble, cancer, you know, tuberculosis, you know, whatever it might be, Father. And maybe they're standing in place for a loved one that, that just doesn't seem to have the faith, but they're going to go believing for that person that as I pray for them now, that it's going to encourage their faith and they're going to take their faith now, Lord, and they're going to go stand for that person and God, you're going to deliver that person for them, Lord. I ask these things now, Father, for these people that are listening tonight and whenever it is that they listen, Father, it might be the next day or even a week from now, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will hear, Father God, because, Lord, you said that, that he that knocketh shall be opened, that he that seeketh they shall find, Father God. You, oh, Lord Jesus, you are truly the same yesterday, today, and forever, as you said in the book of Hebrews, dear God. I believe it, Father God. And you will not do one thing for one child and not do it for another, Lord. So I ask, Father, humbly, Lord, for everyone that's asked tonight, Lord, that you grant their desire, their request, Lord, regardless of when they ask, Father, that you will give them the faith and the courage and the strength to believe it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you, guys. Listen, I, I wanted to close that out there, and I also wanted to speak to uh, some of our friends that are, that are doing life way that you've felt compelled to do that. I want to speak to you guys as well. And maybe as you're listening, you're interested in this too. But the reason why I want to speak with you on these things here is because even LifeWave, it is an amazing technology that Mr. Schmidt developed. But you must remember that will work even better if you believe it. Anything you apply faith to God will honor that faith. I wonder, you know, because we were talking about Abraham and Sarah. Um, but after a year, let the, me get the change was here. pretty. There we go, right there. This lady here, one year later, was already looking much younger. She no longer had the bags under her eyes. She didn't have, her skin had firmed up quite a bit already a year later. That just shows the, the amazing thing about stimulating your stem cells. Now, I don't know how God did it for Abraham and Sarah, but I'll show you right here. That's what happened to that lady two years after using X39. Two years. Look at the difference. You know, to me, it's just completely amazing. And I do know that it happens because I've seen it happen with my wife after only five months. Not that drastic as of yet, but amazing difference. I've seen it with uh, uh, Mia Finnegan, which the lady I interviewed just blew me away what had happened to her, and then she had been nine months after using it. I can only imagine what Mia will look like two years, like this lady here, two years later. All right? Now, that's technology, though. Imagine what your faith can do. See, what happens is we, even our own faith, 
or lack thereof, we just have accepted that after a certain time we're supposed to get old, wrinkle up, and die. And that's why we do die. That's why we do get old. That's why we do begin to wrinkle up. How many of you, especially you men and stuff, you started looking for wrinkles on your hand, maybe at 50 years old or something? Well, they started coming, all right. Why? You were looking for them. Mm. Faith works. And believe me, Satan knows how well faith works. He'll have you testify of things that, you, that do not exist. He'll have you testify of a broken back. He'll have you testify of cancer, of diabetes, and oh, I might have this or oh, I might have that. See, Satan knows how faith works too. And believe me, he'll get you testifying of all kinds of things that don't even exist. But God is obligated to his word. And when you have faith and you're expecting things that are unseen, they will happen even on the negative side. Be careful what you say. Be very careful. And also I want to share with you, we do have a channel called Banoon X39 if you want to go over there and look at the video. We do our Zoom meetings every Sunday night. www x39hub.com you're welcome to come and join uh, you don't have to do this as a business if you don't want to probably 70% of the people that we've shared this with are just customers they go on a preferred customer plan in order to get auto ship which saves them money to do it but if you want to do it as a business you can one thing I do want to bring to your attention, though, is our testimony page. And this is growing. I haven't even loaded up the latest ones. We've got the best in newer, 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 newer ones all the time. But, um, you know, like Lisa here, um, what a beautiful... Well, let me just share uh, a couple of the testimonies with you here. This here, I think, is Brother... brother um, Winners. A uh, yes. little testimony I was going to give you there on the last Sunday was that the stuff has helped my hands. I used to be able to tell when it was going to rain because the arthritis get to hurting in my hands. My wife used to have to put rub on it and gloves on my hands to keep them so that they would stop hurting. But since I've been taking this now for what, about two months, month and a half, I've noticed that my hands don't hurt like that anymore. So. At least it's helping. And with Brother Les, that testimony is still the same. Hasn't changed a bit in the world. Let's see here. The, the doctor felt it for her best interest to... Now, this sister here, like my aunt, her sister had Parkinson's. And I want you to hear, you can't see her on there. Um, I think it's where the ducks are, or the, yeah, the ducks are. I think that's her there. But just listen to what she says. Yes. Well, oh, the, like, the patches are helping her Parkinson's to the point that oh the doctor felt it for her best interest to cut down or cut some to the medications out completely and cut down on the third one. That is incredible. So when you... By the way, that's Les right there, him and his wife. Such a sweet couple there. Uh, let me see here. This was Lisa, and listen to a little. Her thing was on. is the fact that he has, the, you know, the the blockages that puts him at high risk to have another stroke. So we knew that all this time, seventy percent, seventy percent. So they said we need now that's that we've got him that. pretty much stable as far as they think. Um, we're worried about putting him under, but let's. We got to run another scan. So the doctor saw swelling in his leg and said, I don't like this immediately. This was just a couple weeks ago. I need you to go over and get a scan. So we go over there and get a scan. And he goes, I really don't like this leg at all. So the next day I came back and he said, um, I really don't know what to say to you, but there is no blockage at all. None. And he'd been on it. I can't remember a couple weeks, maybe. I'm not really sure the time frame. 
I didn't really care about time frame. We just couldn't believe. And they were like looking at me and I'm like, how can this be? Like, I, I didn't even think about the patch at all, to be honest with you. I just said, but this is impossible. He just, you just told me this in November. So of course I was so happy. I, I just, and then I didn't really dawn on me until I talked to Steve and I said, oh my gosh. So, so I decided that I was going to do it. So my biggest challenges is I've had chronic sinuses and I've also had chronic joint pain, no matter what I've ever done. Doctors like, oh, just, you just got to have this for the rest of your life. Well, that's not an answer for me. I'm not that kind of a person. So yes, I've done things I've helped, but nothing like what the life patch has done for me. The first couple of weeks, I can tell you the mucus in my sinus, there was so much mucus and I'm like, why is this happening? Well, there's none. I can breathe clear back to my sinuses now. Like you would not, I've never been able to do that. And my joint pain, which I've had joint infusions, you know, fusions done on my hands. I've had them done on my feet and I need knee surgery, a joint replacement. Well, guess what guys, I can go out there and run. I yeah, can actually yeah. run. So I'm telling you. That's, I just love these testimonies. I just keep coming in. Let me just share something with you. What my thought is here. You remember like the woman that said, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I'd be made well. You know, what that is, is sometimes with people, it's, it's not that they're, they're, they're missing faith. It's just the way their faith lies at. Like the old lady I used to tell you about that I prayed for that was in her 80s that had a brain tumor. She's only given 50% chance to even survive the surgery. And if she did survive a month intensive care, a month in hospital, so two months altogether in the hospital. And I saw that her faith lied in the doctor as long as God would direct him. And so I prayed for her. And I said, when I pray for you, though, I said, the testimony you're going to have is that it's going to be so miraculous that even the doctors don't understand why you go home so soon. And so when I prayed for her, God, three days later, she's at home. Three days later, not only did she not die with the 50-50 chance, but not 30 days intensive care, not even three days, a day intensive care, two days on the floor, and then she's home. Her own doctors were bewildered by it. So my thought is, even for some of you out there, maybe you have struggled with for prayer, for, for being prayed for, things like that. Maybe X39 is like you touching, and I don't say this in no disrespect to the scriptural uh, truth on, on the woman touching the hem of his garment. I'm just simply saying, maybe it would help you in your faith. Remember, like Paul took, you know, they took from his body uh, aprons and they laid it on the sick and they recovered. It might be that this might be the thing that you, in other words, your faith might believe that this patch could actually help you. I want to say it that way because I don't want to say anything in disrespect to the way God has done things throughout the history of the Bible. But if it's something that you believe would help you, then by all means order it. It's not, it's not, it doesn't mean that you don't believe. Many people, and I think that's what's happened, I think that there's a lot of people that have these that really fascinating results very quickly. I think it's just their own faith. Their own faith, when they put it on, they're just something that just, it just, it just like gives them a little boost in their faith. And they're expecting that something will happen. And so God is able to work in those parameters for them. So if you want to order it, by all means do. Just go to our website, lifewave.com forward slash Banoon, right there where I just highlighted it for you. Uh, when you get there, and of course it'll be in the description below, all you got to do is if you want to become a product user, you just go to the shop button, click on shop. And the one thing I always encourage people, once you click on shop, if you choose just X39 alone, there's a lot of products. You can, you can look at that later. You don't have to do that in the beginning. But just click on X39, right? And then add to your cart. There's two prices there. One's for retail customer. The other, the other is if you're on a uh, plan where you're doing it monthly. 
right? So once you add that to your cart and you go to your cart to check out, right? Right before you go to check out, become a preferred customer. Always click on that because that's how you save the money being a preferred customer. Now some people like doing the PC Plus program. It's only an additional $20 a year, but the company sends you free samples of all the different patches. I hear a lot of people, uh, especially on John Moore's show where they call in on his show, they're always telling people, do the PC Plus so you get the free patches because you'll be excited about what you learn on the other patches. All right, so that's how that works. If you decide, though, you want to be a little bit more entrepreneurial, you want to do this as a business. In fact, my own personal doctor, Dr. Lansky, he's actually going to do this as a business. So he's going to the join button. If you're going to do it as a business, and let's say you're a doctor, now, for individuals, I would say go to gold, mainly because you're going to earn all four ways. But if you're a doctor and you've got a clinic, and let's say you are you might be a uh, chiropractor. My, my doctor is my own regular doctor. He's actually doing this for his patients in his clinic. And he's been studying the science behind it. We've got other doctors that have joined with us. But if you're a doctor, I would go all the way and select the diamond. And it's, it is costly now. It's $1,600. But they give that person right there, notice, 19 sleeves of X39 plus one aloe vita patch. So a total of 20 packages for the price of $1,600. And even at the discounted price, you're still saving $400. Uh, and doctors that do this, or even if you have a, you've got some kind of a nutritional program, you can buy in bulk from the company. But if you become a diamond, and you could also take as that doctor, you could just exit out of that, click on the patches, because let's say, regardless of how you're trying to do this as a business, right? You click on the patches, and you might say, well, I do want, because I'm going to deal with several customers, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, six of the X30 or five X39. So I go one, two, three, four, five, and then five X49. Remember, X39 and X49 makes like a Faraday cage in the skin and helps protect against EMF radiation. One, two, three, four, five. So now you got 10 of those all together, but you still got plenty of room. But you, like I said, you're doing this more for patients that you might feel that you want to help. Carnosine, I definitely would get, say, maybe four there. One, two, three, four. Because in case studies, they have discovered that's, an, that's a key patch for dementia-related illnesses, Parkinson's, dementia, Alzheimer's, etc., right? Eon, great for inflammation. One, two, three, four packages of that. Now, until that thing turns green, you can keep clicking on patches, uh, right? If you're a doctor, you might definitely want to do the pain patches. So I would go ahead and maybe click four of those. Two, three, four. Well, what the heck? Do five. All right, so you did five of those. Uh, so you have some ready to, to, to you know, uh, present to your patients. Energy patches. You might want to try a couple of those. Uh, so let's say go two of those. You want to try a couple of the silent nights. Go ahead and get that there. Well, why not glutathione? Click on at least one. See where we're at. Now the card is full. But you've just given yourself an incredible amount of products to be able to work with. Even if you're just doing that as an individual customer to reach out to people. Uh, you're just wanting to be able to have patches to be able to share, to give us samples, uh, or if you need to retail it to that customer, that person to give them a chance to try it, however you choose to do that, that's up to you. Uh, anyway, then you go ahead and you hit click continue and you can check out from there. Uh, and it's just step by step. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at benoonx 39 that's B E. N N U N X39 at gmail.com will gladly answer any questions that you have. Um, 
and help you get through it. If we can't help you, we do have uh, more team members that can help out as well. And uh, so uh, anyway, just bear with us and we'll get to you as quickly as possible. Anyway, thank you for listening. I trust that today's message has been uplifting and a blessing to you guys. Uh, It's been a blessing for me to share those things with you. And thank you, thank you, and thank you for those of you that want to support the the work we do too. Don't forget IsraeliNewsLive.org, and our you can donate online right there directly there or Danoon Institute PO Box One Five Six Sunbright Tennessee Three Seven Eight Seven Two. And we do sincerely thank you for your support of this work. God bless.